Namaha ho 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 Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Sri Makte Bhakti Vedanta Swami Naiti Amine Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristam Prabhupada Namaste Saraswati Deve Yehuavani Tuchahadine Nivisesa Sinya Padi Evas Yat Yaresa Tahine Namaste Sari Ghor Bhakta Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Rityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Rityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hey. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Hare, Hare. Hare Om, Hare Om. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Om, Hare Om, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Om, Hare Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Hare Hare. Nithai Gaur. Hey, Hari 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 Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Jai Prabhu Pad. Jai Jai Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Jai Prabhu Pad. Lord Premanande, Lord Prabhupada Ki Jai, Hare Krishna Mahamantra Ki Jai. Omagyan Timiranda Sya, Giranjana Salakaya, Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tas, my Sri Guru Vena Maha, Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale, Svayam Rupa, Kedam Mayam Dadati Svam Padanti Kam. Maung Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimakti Bhakti Viranta Swami Tinamine, Namaste Saraswati Deve Godavani Pacharine, Nirvise Sasunyavadi Pastyatya De Sitari, Pancha Kalpa Tru Vishya, Kripa Sindhu Pe Bhutya, Paditanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namahonama. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Srivasari Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai So I uh, heard you all were doing Maha Clean up Gudichina Marjanam Seva. Wonderful. Uh, this is probably the highest form of Seva you can do in the te for the temple. <laughs> uh, it feels much nicer here today. Cleanliness has a feeling to it, and dirtiness also has one feeling to it, which is quite the opposite. When it's clean, everything feels light. When it's dirty, everything feels 
heavy. So the light feeling is good because it is an indicated of a suchi. And we are suchi and not muchi. So tonight I'll speak on today's occasion, which is the Tirobhav of uh, Sri Ishwara Puri the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya. To honor the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya means to honor Lord Chaitanya in the best possible way. When you honor someone who is dear to someone who's, who is dear to you, that person who is dear to you becomes even more dear. <laughs> so, if just like if you want to glorify Krishna, Glorify Radharani. <laughs> and if you want to glorify Radharani, glorify Krishna. <laughs> Sometimes we say that when you're chanting Hare Krishna. If you think of, when you say Hare, if you, if you Hare and you think of Krishna, that's the best way of s chanting Hare. And when you say Krishna and you think of Radha, that's more powerful than thinking of Krishna. One who is l one who becomes the lover of the person that you're trying to love is more dear to that person, and therefore that glorification is higher <laughs> or better. That's bhakti. So Ishwara Puri, his name we don't know at the time of birth. It remains unknown even to this day. But he came from a place called Kurmahata. But I'll narrate a little bit about how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met his spiritual master. Because it's really sweet. Um, Lord Chaitanya, prior to his accepting his initiation, that Gaya from Ishwarapuri was known as Nimai Pandit. The very arrogant. <laughs> scholar of Navadweep. <laughs> he was arrogant. <laughs> but he was imitating a particular mood that scholars have a tendency to be arrogant. <laughs> and therefore, he gave it up. Why did he become a scholar? And in such a way as being arrogant when in his learning? Just to show that when he gave it up, it's useless. <laughs> He plays the part of something that people like and then shows it's not so important by giving it up and taking something higher. Another way how the Lord teaches about devotion by, by rejecting what other people consider to be you know, attractive or important. So he became an, a scholar just to show you, I don't want it. <laughs> Interesting how Lord Chaitanya teaches. So after he, he came to da Gaya, and there when he was in Gaya, he bathed in a place called Brahmakund. And after bathing and offering oblations to the forefathers, he went into a place called Chakra Veda. And Chakra Veda was like a mandir. And in there is the beautiful lotus feet of Lord Vishnu, beautiful deity actually. And on his lotus feet were piles and piles of garlands, flowers, tulsi, sandalwood paste all over his body, and many, many saintly Brahmins standing there offering beautiful players to Lord Vishnu. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw that, his, his heart became so attracted that he started to go into ecstasy and love for Vishnu. As we know, Lord Chaitanya is in the mood of a devotee. Although he is a lord, he is in the mood of a devotee of the Lord. So in that mood, he was showing his ecstasy for, for his love for the Lord. While he was in there, this great saint called Ishwar Purti walks in. When Lord Chaitanya saw this Ishwara Puri, he immediately saw that this is a great personality. He turned his attention to Ishwara Puri. 
they looked at the, each other with great love, and then they embraced each other, and tears flowed from their eyes in love for each other. And Lord Chaitanya said to Ishwari Puri, actually, all the holy places together do not, do not equal the benefit of having your special darshan. Therefore, your lotus feet are the supreme tirtha, or the best of all holy places. So the Lord actually became, this is the first meeting that they had. So this was the connection that later led to the Lord taking initiation from Ishwar Puri. After some time, uh, Ishwar Puri left the temple and the Lord went back to his place and he was cooking. He was cooking his own lunch. And uh, Ishwar Puri just happened to come in coincidence. Ah, and he said, I have come at the right time. <laughs> the Lord said, yes, please sit down. I have cooked. But then Ishwara Puri said, well, what will you eat? There's only enough for you. No. We will divide it into two portions. No, the, the Ishwara Puri said, we will divide it into two portions and you, and we will, least the Lord said, no, actually, you sit down and I will cook again. So you eat. So he sat down, and while he was sitting down, Rama Devi, who nobody saw, appeared there and cooked for Lord Chaitanya so he could have a meal, <laughs> although no one saw it. And then he fed Ishwara Puri very nice. And then that led to a one wonderful loving exchange between the two, and then the Lord actually surrendered his life and so well, why would the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is called Adi Guru, and he's the original Guru, take initiation? Does he have to take initiation? Actually, in, the, in their exchange, it is said that, uh, of course, Ishwar Puri, he was always constantly chanting the holy names of the Lord. So he could understand that this person who I have met, is the Supreme Lord himself. And so, he, when he saw Lord Chaitanya, he said, actually, Lord Chaitanya said, well, you have come to give me bhakti. And, Lord, and Ishwara Puri said, I have come to receive bhakti from you. <laughs> In other words, he understood who he was. But Lord Chaitanya didn't listen to that. He just went on with his glorification of his spiritual master. And so this was very sweet. And then, of course, later on, he accepted initiation. And uh, their exchange was, so, was just so deep that after some time, when Lord Chaitanya returned to Navadweep, he was no longer the arrogant scholar Nimai Pandit. He was simply exhibiting love for Krishna. And he would teach. And everything he would teach, no matter what it was, it was about Krishna. All the verbs, all the adjectives, all the sentence structures meant Krishna. <laughs> His students became a little upset. <laughs> You're saying everything is Krishna. We're not learning anything. <laughs> he, then they complained to his his teacher, Ganga Narayan. Ganga Narayan said, I'll, I'll speak to him later. <laughs> but Lord Chaitanya became, what we say, absorbed in Krishna at that time. And then and there's nothing that was anything about him. He was always thinking about Krishna. In fact, he became mad after Krishna. So here is an, an, an interesting point to understand that the Supreme Personality of Godhead accepts the role of a devotee and accepts a spiritual master and, and serves the spiritual master like a menial servant. What is he doing? He's teaching. He's teaching by example that without accepting a spiritual master, one cannot attain perfection in life, nor one can attain the happiness of spiritual life. One has to 
submit themselves to the lotus feet of those who are representing the Supreme Personality of Godhead in pure devotional service. So there's one verse, tad vigyartam gurum eva abhigatsche. Abhigatsche means must. One must eventually come to the point of surrender to Krishna. Surrender to Krishna means surrendering to his representative, the pure spiritual master, who will guide the, the devotee in devotional service. And that mercy is required because we can't approach Krishna directly. Although we have a, we have a direct relationship with Krishna, that's there. But Krishna has set up the process that in order to achieve that relationship with him, one has to accept his lotus feet in the form of accepting the shelter of his pure devotee, spiritual master. And when, when one does that, one can attain the full mercy of the Lord through following the instructions of the spiritual master. So although Lord Chaitanya didn't need a spiritual master, and he could have went on without, but he wanted to teach by example the importance the absolute importance of accepting a bona fide spiritual master. Adad strata sadhu sangha bhajana kriya anarta nivritti nishta ruchi ashakti bhava and prema, the nine stages of bhakti. Bhakti is a science and it goes through nine stages. Adad strata means association with devotees. Or I'm sorry, it means coming into the faith of wanting to associate with devotees. Sadhu Sangha means that association. So in that association, one learns about the process of bhakti, starts to execute the process of bhakti, chants the holy name, follows all the principles, and develops a taste to achieve Krishna. And then, as that stage becomes what we say, solidified, mature, developed, one thinks, what do I have to do now? Well, then the next stage is uh, Guru Seva. <laughs> one should accept a, the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. One can make progress in chanting of the holy names of the Lord up to a certain point. But there are rare souls who can chant the holy names of the Lord and continue to make progress, but they are special souls that have had bhakti for many lives. But that should not be assumed. Therefore, everyone must accept a bona fide spiritual master and surrender. Because accepting means to surrender to Krishna. And this is what Lord Chaitanya was teaching. And how he served his spiritual master is really interesting. His spiritual master wrote one book called Krishna Lilamrita. And it was about the pastimes of Krishna and other things. And this is the time when uh, Ishwar Puri had come to Navadweep. And Lord Chaitanya invited him to come to his home for Prashad. And while they were there, Ishwar Puri had his book, one copy, Krishna Lilamrita, and he said, I have written this book, but you are expert in grammar and logic and sentence structure and everything. Please go through this book and see if there are any mistakes. So he's asking his disciple to see if his, the spiritual master has made a mistake. Interesting point. <laughs> So Lord Chaitanya said, actually, there's no mistakes. <laughs> no, no, go through it, please, and see what you can find. So obedient to his spiritual master, he went through this whole book. And he found one verb that was structured wrong. I can't remember that verb, Visnave or something like that. I can't remember. So the verb was in the wrong tense, you know. There was different verb tenses, if you know English structure. And uh, so, Nishwarpoi said, 
did you find anything? He said, yes, I have found this one. And then he explained. And then Ishwar Puri, after looking and reading what he had wrote, he said, actually, no, it's not a mistake. <laughs> what I wrote is correct. <laughs> so this was a test just to see and to show that even the Lord did find a mistake, but the spiritual master says it's not a mistake. So even if it is the mistake and the spiritual master says it's not a mistake, it's not a mistake. Got it? <laughs> if you know this, you know bhakti. <laughs> uh, Prabhupada. Prabhupada, in the early days, he was getting his lectures recorded. And so he would take the recordings and he would send it by mail to one devotee for additional editing. So these were on cassettes. So Prabhupada had a few cassettes, so he wrapped them together and got it ready for postal delivery. Sit still. <laughs> you can do it. There you go, yogi. Okay. <laughs> and... Uh, so he called his assistant, servant, and he said, here, mail this. So he gives him the package. The uh, assistant looks at the package and said, you know, Swamiji, because he was known as Swamiji in those days, uh, it's not wrapped properly. It won't go through the post off. Prabhupada said, no, that's okay. Just mail it. Just mail it. So he goes out, starts walking. He looks... It's not going to go. <laughs> Comes back again. You know, Swamiji, you know, it's definitely gonna, not going to go. It's not going to make it through the postal system. And Papa said, just mail it. It's okay. <laughs> and so he goes out again, and, and again he's starting to think, this is not going to go. <laughs> And this time he came back to Prabhupada and Prabhupada took his fist. Everything I do is correct. Mail it! <laughs> so was Prabhupada being arrogant? No, he was teaching. You have to listen to your spiritual master. <laughs> no matter what. If you accept an authority, then to follow the authority is the principle of accepting the authority like that. Sometimes we don't understand what the spiritual master does, and a lot of times we don't. And therefore, we see things in a material way. And that, have caused, that causes us to have a little a loss of faith. But that's dangerous. That's why too much association with the spiritual master can cause us to see the, the spiritual master as ordinary. But the spiritual master is not ordinary because he's empowered by Krishna to do the work that Krishna wants in the world, that is, to save the conditioned souls. So someone asked Prabhupada, do you know everything, Prabhupada? And Prabhupada says, no, but I know what I need to know. <laughs> and what does that mean? He knows how to guide his disciples. That he knows. So that's the principle that the spiritual master is expert. He knows how to direct his disciples. Because Krishna, within the heart, tells him exactly how to do it. And therefore, he follows that. So that's, that's the knowledge that the spiritual master, that's his perfection. He may not know, you know, how many people are in China or, <laughs> you know, what, whether tomorrow is going to be rainy or sunny. <laughs> but he does know... <laughs> Krishna, and he knows how to inspire others in their progress towards Krishna. So with that faith, one can make progress in spiritual life. So Lord Chaitanya taught that through Ishwar Puri by this one principle of pointing out the mistake, and then when his spiritual master said, no, it's not a mistake, he accepted it. He didn't argue. He didn't even say anything. He said, well, I'm a grammar expert, and you asked me, and this is what I found. No, no. Yeah. That would simply be impudence on the part of the disciple. So he taught that principle of, of following the spiritual master. And there are many, many other uh, 
examples, stories, than how this p particular point plays out. Another interesting point about the Ishwara Puri is how he became the spiritual master of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is also related to Guru Tattva. And that is when Madhavendra Puri was the spiritual master of Ishwara Puri. And Madhavendra Puri was a very highly advanced Vaishnava. He's an eternal resident of the spiritual world. He is a Kalpa Vriksha tree. If you know what a Kalpa Vriksha tree is, in the spiritual world there are trees that can fulfill all your desires. Prabhupada said, you go to a, a lemon tree and here you, and you can get lemons. But if you go to a Kalpa Vriksha tree in the spiritual world, you can get any fruit you want. <laughs> or anything you want, not just fruit. <laughs> So it's a desire tree, and sometimes we call it, sometimes we say uh, sarabi, which is a name for cows that fulfill all desires. And so this Madhavendra Puri, in his last days, he was in ecstasy of love of God. And he was crying in separation, because Lord Chaitanya taught us, don't try to see Krishna but try to serve Krishna in the way that Krishna wants to see you. That's the process of devotional service, that we execute our service in such a way that Krishna is pleased and he comes and gives his mercy in so many ways. There are people who try to see Krishna, but that's not our process. Our process is to try to serve Krishna and the mood is separation. So Madhavendra Puri taught that mood. He was highly advanced in that ecstasy of love of God in the mood of separation. So in his last days, he was calling out to the Lord, O Maturanath, and he was calling Krishna in various names, feeling great separate and crying. He was crying in ecstasy of separation and love for Krishna. And then one of his disciples, his name was Ramachandra Puri, he came and he saw Madhavendra Puri, his spiritual master, in that mood and he said, Guru Maharaj, you know, be calm. You know, just focus on Brahman. <laughs> be peaceful. <laughs> Whoa. That was the end of him. <laughs> Madhavendra Puri said, I'm dying and I'm and I'm feeling separation from Krishna and you're instructing me about Brahman he said if I die seeing your your despicable face I don't I'll take a lower birth in some planet so get out of here and don't ever come back and don't ever ever let me let me see your face again yeah he was angry he tried to instruct his spiritual master in the complete opposite way of how his spiritual master was feeling he was in ecstasy of love of God. He's crying. And he said, just be peaceful. Meditate. Think of Brahman. <laughs> and Madhavendra Puri. So when that happened, and he was rejected by his spiritual master, all his material desires returned. Hmm. So as you make progress in spiritual life, your, your material desires are... But if you commit... Guru Aparad, then you, you might find that your material desires start returning again. So one has to be very conscious of that and careful. But there was another person whose name was Ishwara Puri, who was also a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. And when Madhavendra Puri was in that last stages, he couldn't take care of his personal needs. He was practically unable to maintain his own body. And so in order to assist his Guru Maharaj, he did the most menial service of cleaning up after his spiritual master. And he did it with such love and attention that Madhavendra Puri was so pleased with Ishwar Puri and gave him his supreme blessing. And because of that blessing, because he had pleased his spiritual master so much, he became the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya. In other words, he earned the complete mercy of the Lord through doing Guru Seva. This is a very, also a very important point. 
If one pleases the spiritual master, as we say, yasya prasada, bhagavat prasada, yasya prasada, bhagavat prasado, yasya prasadan, naguti kutobi. That if one serves the spiritual master and pleases the spiritual master, Krishna is pleased. But if one tries to please Krishna without pleasing the spiritual master, nagati kutopi, it's all useless. Like that. Like that. So we worship Krishna, but we worship the spiritual master as the representative of Krishna. Therefore, he comes in that form to accept our service. Therefore, one who develops love for their spiritual master, that love is, is synonymous with love for Krishna. Like that. Because Krishna's spiritual master is his mercy manifestation. Krishna can be really tough sometimes. He can make he can make it your life a little rough. But the spiritual master is called the kind father. He make he makes approach to Krishna easy. And the Prabhupada said if the Krishna if Krishna says if the spiritual master says, Give this person mercy Krishna has no choice. He has to. <laughs> yeah. But if you ask mercy for Krishna directly, he may give it, and he may not. <laughs> but if we please Krishna's representative, the bona fide spiritual master, and then that's the way, that's the key to the unlimited mercy of Krishna. Like that. So this is the process. And that's why Lord Chaitanya not only took the part of a disciple, but showed how the disciple should serve his spiritual master. That same Ramachandra Puri, who was rejected by his spiritual master, later came to associate with the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. And what happened, he started to find fault with the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. And then he started to find fault with Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya didn't say anything because it says that because he was the god brother of Ishwara Puri, that you you accept and you honor your guru's god brother as much as you honor your guru. Yeah. The guru the god brother of your guru is honorable just as much as your spiritual master. That is the etiquette. So Lord Chaitanya, although he knew Ramachandra Puri was off, because it was his guru's godbrother, he did. He took the criticism because Ramachandra Puri started to find fault with Lord Chaitanya. He started finding fault with the devotees, and then finally, at one point, uh, Lord Chaitanya was becoming. He was criticizing Lord Chaitanya's eating because the devotees would cook for Lord Chaitanya and he would eat just to please the devotees. But he would eat a lot. So Ramachandra Puri would say, just see, look at this sannyasi. He eats so much. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya cut his eating in half <laughs> when he criticized him. And then he would say, look on the floor, look at all these ants. This shows that at night he gets up and he eats sweets secretly so nobody sees it. Yeah, this is what he was saying about Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya stopped eating sweets. So he was just, and but the devotees were getting upset. They couldn't serve Lord Chaitanya like they wanted to because the Lord was not accepting their offering because of the criticism of Ramachandra Puri. So... The devotees were getting upset with Ramachandra Puri, but they couldn't say anything. <laughs> so finally, by Krishna's arrangement, Ramachandra Puri left Navadweep and never came back again. <laughs> yeah, he had committed enough offenses and finished his association with devotees. So this is also important. To get the association of devotees is very special. To lose the association of devotees is one's great unfortunate to have the association of devotees. So in that mood of association or in that atmosphere of association, we should appreciate the, the idea of that association. Because in that association, this is where we make our advancement. 
This is where, how we learn the process of devotional service. This is where we get inspiration in Krishna consciousness. And this is where we actually develop love for Krishna. So Prabhupada used to say, there's three things that are important in, in, the, in the execution of devotional service. Association, association, association. Can you remember those three? <laughs> Yes, so this is the process. So yeah, so Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, Sarva Sastri Hoy, Lava Matta Saru Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoy. One moment's association, in the association of devotees, one can become purified from all material desires. This is the power of devotee association. If we learn how to associate, and how do you associate from senior devotees? You hear from them and offer personal service. From equals, you make friends and share Krishna consciousness together. From devotees who are on a lesser platform to you, you help them by giving them opportunities to advance in Krishna consciousness. In other words, the mood of compassion. So these are the three ways to associate like that. For seniors, we offer service and hear from them. From juniors, we uh, give them our association in the form of kindness, care, and inspiration. And for equals, we make friends <laughs> and share Krishna consciousness. If you follow these, as Prabhupada writes in the purport of one verse that describes these three, he says, you will never feel any of the pains of material existence. In other words, you'll never suffer anything about this material world simply by following that these process. He writes it, and he not only writes it, but he repeats it in the same verse just to make the point like that. So yeah, but then the opposite is if we find fault or become critical or we, th we think the atmosphere of devotional association is something material, it's just like everybody else gets together in a group. No, it's not. It's a sangha. It's a sangha means a, a, a holy place where people can execute devotional service in the best possible way. So when Lord Chaitanya asked Ramananda Roy, what is the greatest misfortune? Ramananda said, Ramananda Roy said, the greatest misfortune is, is to not have the association of devotees. <laughs> So, so just to make that point, because we saw from the example of Ramachandra Puri how he lost that association because of criticism, and how Ishwar Puri, because he pleased his spiritual master so nicely, sacrificed everything, he gained the topmost position of love of God. Interesting. Okay, so this is a very special day. The spiritual master of, of Lord Chaitanya, Ishwar Puri. So today is his Tirobhav. We don't celebrate his appearance because no one knows when he appeared. If there's any comments or questions about anything we discussed tonight, Dani Lu? Yes. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, can you please uh, describe how can one distinguish between following the spiritual master instructions and blind following? Well, Prabhupada makes that point in the Bhagavad Gita in one purport. He said, blind following and absurd inquiries are rejected. So one should understand the spiritual master's instructions. You may hear it, but you have to understand it. And understanding means to ask questions related to it. If you understand it, there's no need to question. But if there's some doubt about how to execute it, then that's important. Because it's better to to ask the question, get a clear understanding, 
as opposed to thinking, well, I know the instruction and you might make a mistake. So, so clarification of the philosophical teachings, because a lot of times the spiritual master will not explain things, he'll just say things. And then explanations are required in, in many cases. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, do you have a question? Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, could I please ask um, what are the indicators that um, we can start to search for our spiritual master? When, how do we know that um, we are ready to start to search for our spiritual master? Hmm. Well, that you start, you understand that by your own experience. It's something that you start to, th if you're coming regularly, you're chanting and you're following the process, then you start to think, well, what is my next step? Where do I go from here? And then that, I, that feeling that I need personal guidance becomes prominent. And then it says, when the disciple is ready, the guru appears. <laughs> when the disciple is ready, the guru appears. So it says that when you try to serve Krishna, Krishna sends his representative to... In other words, guru brings you to Krishna. In order, Krishna will bring you to Guru, and then Guru brings you to Krishna. <laughs> Krishna shows you your spiritual master when you're ready, and then when you accept, then, then Guru brings you to Krishna like that. And you'll, if you're following the process nicely, of course we also give a little indication how to follow the process. That we say for six months, one should practice devotional service in association with devotees, chant, read the books, ask questions, do the services, and then that will gradually inspire you to want to go further. It'll happen automatically. After six months, usually a person starts looking for the spiritual master around that time, if they're following regularly, that is. Any other questions? Guru Tattva is a really uh, very complex subject. Alex, question. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, can I make a comment? Yeah, um, yeah. Um, it's um, what you are saying about spiritual master. Um, some of the things uh, I could uh, experience now because I'm so fortunate by the grace of Sri Pancha Tattva and Prabhupada that he sent me his, uh, Srila Prabhupada sent me his disciple, uh, his holiness Pradhan Swami Maharaj. And um, um, to execute in the right way a service to spiritual master, you can benefit a lot, yet you can... Uh, uh, Make mistakes? Yes, and then... But I can tell you how your mistakes are not serious. If you, if you have one particular mood, then mistakes can be overlooked. But it, one of the things you don't do is try to hide your mistakes by making excuses. <laughs> if you do that, you look really bad. <laughs> well, it's not a mistake. I <laughs> so, you know, the idea is that one should be humble. When, the, when a devotee is humble, even if they make mistakes, it's not so important because they're trying. But if a devotee is tries to hide their mistakes or just acts like, well, you know, I know how to do everything, and, and 
you know, it's not really a mistake. It just looks like one. <laughs> then you're in trouble. Or if you try to show off to your spiritual master how good you can serve, that's another problem. <laughs> you should try to serve nicely in the right mood. But if you think, well, you just look, I'm just expert at doing things. And therefore, I'm the best. <laughs> then you have a problem. Thank you, Maharaj. The right things I want to hear. I need yeah. to hear. <laughs> yeah. If you get praised by your spiritual master, you're in, you're in trouble. But if you get critic, if you get chastised, you're in the best position. Because chastisement helps us to move forward. It brings out our. It can help us to improve. Praises doesn't help you to improve. It may inspire you. If you're humble and you get praise, you're inspired to do better. But if you get chastised, then you think, oh, wow, that's special mercy. This is the process of becoming perfect. It's not like we are perfect. <laughs> It's a process. So if you maintain this uh, new mood of humility in your service, you'll always be in the best position because even if you make mistakes, it's not taken so seriously. I've seen, yeah, we've seen Prabhupada and we, we also do it ourselves. A person will make a little mistake and they'll get really heavily chastised. And the person will make a big mistake and won't get so much chastisement. Because the spiritual master can see the mentality that that person who made a little mistake, he doesn't even think it's a mistake. And so he's getting chastised, not for the mistake, but for his mentality. <laughs> so that's usually, you always have to keep yourself in the right mood the mood of trying to serve in the best possible way. That's Never thinking that you are such a great servant. Always trying to improve. And you can always ask, how can I improve? Like that. And then you'll get answers like that. Well, you're lucky. Pallad and Andamaraj is very kind and merciful. I know some gurus that would just slam you. <laughs> That's their nature, you know. Whether you get slammed or not. <laughs> we shouldn't take a spiritual master because he's a nice guy. <laughs> That's not a qualification. We should take a spiritual master because he can bring us to Krishna. He knows the science of, of bhakti and he can lead us there. That's the reason for accepting a spiritual master. And he may be a nice guy too. <laughs> By nature, spiritual masters are kind. By nature, but then they, they exhibit different moods according to what's needed at the time. Mm -hmm. I've seen where spirit, uh, the disciples are they're trying to get the favor of their spiritual master, so they work really hard and they, they're humble and they do everything so nicely. And then they start getting some favor, some some attention, and then they could become proud, and then they start making mistakes, and then they're back down again. <laughs> so that idea of getting proud is the problem, you know. Yeah. Accept everything that comes by way of mercy, and that's why and then we can accept it that way. It's simply mercy.
Question? Oh no, that you were just scratching your head. Okay. So when people have to be careful when they scratch their head because they go like this, you know. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Donnie Lou, okay. What can one do if one finds a catch himself to be proud? Just to... Mm. I just realize it's, it's, it's something you have to get rid of. Proud is, the word proud is translated in Sanskrit as madda, M-A-D-A, -A. and madda translated means madness. It's a form of madness, pride. Because everything that we are, or what we have, is given to us by the grace of the Lord. So just, just try to become free from that by realizing that, you know, it's Krishna's mercy, that's all. It's Guru's mercy. And it's true. I see, see, punch it that for key jai. Is that okay? Yeah. Any any wrong mentality? Because we know enough about the philosophy to understand what's the right mentality and what's the wrong mentality. Any wrong mentality that comes in comes into your consciousness, just kick it out and bring in the right mentality. If you leave the wrong mentality in there, it'll grow and then becomes. Something you don't even recognize anymore. So what is the right mentality? The right mentality is that we should always be in the mood of serving. If we're always in the mood to serve, we're always in the right mood. Because that's our position is to serve. To serve the Lord, to serve the spiritual master, to serve the Vaishnavas, to serve the Yatra, to serve. This is our mood. So one who is in the... One who is, uh, in the right mentality is always thinking how best to serve, or they're thinking about Krishna, either one. These are the different consciousness that are acceptable. Think about Krishna or think about how to serve. These are the two moods. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Mataji. What is your name again? Karuna Sakti. Hmm? Karuna Sakti. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hare Krishna. You're an ocean of compassion, then. Um, uh, my question would be, when we speak about uh, serving the, uh, our guru, guru, do we think mainly about practical service or also following the principles, the vows, uh, the instructions that we hear from the lectures? How, how do we...? Well, both. <laughs> yeah. You, According to time and circumstances, you're serving in a certain way. So if you, if you gain something from a lecture, then you think, well, can I use that in my service? And you see if you can use it. That's the reason we come for, for these classes, to get ideas how to improve our service, how, our, how to improve our service attitude, how to improve our service. Mm -hmm. So... To go along in a routine way is nice, but we don't really make enough advancement. We should always be looking for opportunities to, you know, serve better or to understand things better. So a devotee is eager to learn, a devotee is eager to serve, a devotee is eager to improve. These are the consciousness. When we first come into Krishna consciousness, we're mostly attracted by what service we're doing. We're attracted to serve in a certain way. But after some time, we get more attracted to Krishna. And we see the service as our connection with Krishna. Like that. So whatever improves your, helps you to improve your relationship with Krishna, then that you can adopt that. You should. We should be in that mood to try to, all right, there's something I can learn that will improve my service to Krishna, improve my 
increase my attraction for Krishna. Just like when we hear about Krishna's pastimes or Krishna's qualities, these are all attractive and then they, they bring our heart closer to Krishna. Just, and that's the idea, to, to come closer to Krishna. So anything we can, we just like if we can take away one important point from every lecture, just one. Of course, we can get if we get more, it's better. If we can take one away from every lecture and apply it, then that that was a successful process of hearing. <laughs> just one. Hare Krishna. Are you ready for class? Not yet. Okay. Well. We'll, we'll see when you're ready, then we'll begin class. <laughs> A yogi. Okay, so, does that help? Yeah. Uh, devotee's always eager to learn, to improve. You know, that's why the process, the process of Krishna consciousness is shravanam. It's all about hearing. That's the process. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tomorrow you're, we'll continue with the uh, Mandir Marginum. Okay, good. In a place will become even more lighter. Good. We want that. Okay, so t maybe tomorrow I might pipe, pipe in, pop in and see what's going on and maybe pick up a broom. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and there's nothing better in terms of, you know, mundier than cleaning the, the temple. Lord Chaitanya did it himself. Tomorrow night, if you come for class, I hope you do, I'll speak about the whole, pro the whole pastime of Gundicha Marjanam. The whole the Lord Chaitanya cleaning the Gundicha temple in Jagannath Puri, which is a beautiful, beautiful pastime. So, um, come. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Ishwarapuri ki jai, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai.